FSC Biology Quick Summaries Chapter 16 First Half Support and Movement for the Preparation of PPSC Lecturer and Subject Specialist Zoology and Biology. This chapter contains these uh, major topics uh, from support in plants up to locomotion in vertebrates. But in this first half, we shall discuss support in plants and up to deformities of skeleton. Allah says in Quran that for indeed it is not eyes that are blinded, but blinded are the hearts which are within chest. Surah Al Hajj, verse 46. So let's enlighten our hearts with the understanding of the deep knowledge of this subject. Support in plants. In baby plants, Colon chyma provides support while in adult plants, scleran chyma provides support. Parent chyma cells are rigid due to torture and are present in epidermis, cortex, pith. Please remember these three locations where these uh, uh, particular cells are present. Now, wilting of herbaceous stems or death of herbaceous stems is due to loss of turgidity by parent chyma cells. So, wilting occurs due to parent chyma cells. Sacleran chyma cells have highly lignified cell wall, mean that cell wall contain uh, rich lignin and uh, simple pits are also present in the center in sacleran chyma. So there is a distinction that simple pits are present in which type of cells? Sacleran chyma. Most sacleran chyma cells are non-living, that is another distinction. Xylem is tough, inextensible and form rings to provide resistance against wind. Sunflower plants have fibers of scleran chyma which form bundle caps. So which type of cells form bundle cap in sunflower? Scleran chyma. Tracheids are scleran chyma cells which are actually fiber cells and exist as solid bundles. While scleroids are also scleran chyma cells but they are shorter than tracheid and are found in seed coat and nut shells. Colon chyma cells lack secondary wall but Angular thickening is seen in the primary wall. So the primary wall has kind of angular thickening. That is a distinction. And please remember that. Now, vascular cambium appears in between. In between primary xylem and phloem. In between primary xylem and phloem. Now, vascular cambium divides toward the center to form secondary xylem while on its outer side it divides to produce secondary phloem. So please remember the distinction. When it divides toward the center or inside it forms secondary xylem but when it grows outward it forms secondary phloem that is the vascular cambium. Most of increase in thickness is caused by secondary xylem in the stems or in the roots. Secondary xylem keeps on dividing to form rings in woody stems and these rings are very important to understand. Now one growth ring is formed in one year. So counting layers determine age of tree. So we can determine the age of any old tree by cutting the stem and counting the these growth rings. Conduction of water is limited to outer younger secondary xylem called as sapwood while the inactive non-conducting central portion of xylem is called heartwood. So that is the difference between sapwood and heartwood. Sapwood the name is given because it contains sap which is a solution of uh, mineral and uh, water. In red cedar and conifers, heartwood store also resins, oils, gums and tannins. So these four major chemicals are linked with these two plants, red cedar and uh, the category conifers. Please remember. Callus is parenchyma tissue formed where cuts or wounds occur in the stems or in the shoots of the plants and uh, this callus unite the branches during budding or grafting of branches. That is very important thing to understand that when we graft uh, a certain stem from another plant to uh, some other plant uh, that union of these two different stems or cuttings is due to basically callus. So that is a parenchyma tissue. Please remember. Now cork on commercial scale is obtained from uh, Quercus Huber, the plant's name of the plant. So Quercus Huber is the major source for commercial cork. Movements. <clears throat> Plants show different growth pattern in response to external stimuli. So actually these different growth patterns are the movements. 
अटानमिक मूवमेंट्स आर ड्यू टू इंटरनल स्टिमुलाई वाइल पैराटोनिक मूवमेंट्स आर ड्यू टू एक्सटर्नल स्टिमुलाई दैट इज द टू मेजर काइंड ऑफ मूवमेंट्स इन प्लांट्स अटानमिक एंड पैराटोनिक अटानमिक इज ड्यू टू इंटरनल स्टिमुलाई वाइल पैराटोनिक इज ड्यू टू सम एक्सटर्नल स्टिमुलाई नाउ टेक्टिक टर्जर एंड ग्रोथ मूवमेंट्स आर अटानमिक मूवमेंट्स वाइल ट्रॉपिक एंड नास्टिक मूवमेंट्स आर पैराटोनिक मूवमेंट्स दैट वन सेंटेंस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एम सी क्यूज बिकॉज दीज हैव बीन सीन इन द पास्ट पेपर्स टेक्टिक मूवमेंट्स आर लोको मोशन ऑफ एंटायर सेल और होल सेल और ऑर्गेनिज्म ड्यू टू इंटरनल स्टिमुलाई एंड दैट टेक्टिक मूवमेंट रिजेंबल विद लोको मोशन इन एनिमल्स पॉजिटिव मूवमेंट्स आर टूवर्ड स्टिमुलाई वाइल नेगेटिव आर अवे फ्राम स्टिमुलाई सो दैट इज द पॉजिटिव एंड नेगेटिव एस्पेक्ट ऑफ ऑल काइंड ऑफ मूवमेंट्स फोटोटेक्टिक मूवमेंट इज इन रेस्पॉन्स टू स्टिमुलस ऑफ लाइट क्लोरोप्लास्ट मूव टू वर्ड लाइट ड्यू टू साइक्लोसिस दैट इज द मूवमेंट ऑफ क्लोरोप्लास्ट इज पॉजिटिव फोटोटेक्टिक मूवमेंट प्लीज रिमेंबर द टर्म साइक्लोसिस मूवमेंट ऑफ स्पर्म्स ऑफ लिवरवर्ड्स मोसेज फंस टूवर्ड आर्चीगोनिया इज कीमोटेक्टिक बिकॉज ड्यू टू न्यूक्लिक एसिड सक्रीशन फ्रॉम द आर्चीगोनिया एंड दैट न्यूक्लिक एसिड लीव दैम लीड दैम एक्चुअली टू मूव टूवर्ड आर्चीगोनिया एंड फर्टिलाइज रेपिड मूवमेंट ऑफ लिफलेट्स ऑफ टच मी नाट और माइमोसा एंड स्लीप मूवमेंट्स बोथ आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ टर्जर मूवमेंट्स प्लीज रिमेंबर बीन प्लांट लोअर देयर लीव्स इन इवनिंग एंड रेज दैम इन मॉर्निंग आर ड्यू टू टर्जर चेंजेस इन पुलवीनस प्लीज रिमेंबर बीन प्लांट so pulvinus uh, actually is swollen portion of petiole where leaf attach with shoot when turgid pressure decreases on lower side of pulvinus leaves lower similarly uh, in mimosa plant which is uh, famous as touch me not plant rapid folding of leaflets on touching is because of turgid changes or you can say sudden turgid changes in pulvinus which take One second or more to fold, but ten minutes to restore again due to uh, the accumulation of uh, different sources of water and minerals. In this rapid movement, potassium ions move out, followed by exosmosis of water. In epinasty, more growth occurs on upper side of the leaf. In hyponasty, more growth occurs on lower side of the leaf that is the difference <clears throat> now very important definition notation notation is zigzag growth due to alternate changes on opposite sides of the stem shoot for example the tendrils grow in a zigzag or spiral manner torpropos the word tropo mean turn please remember so the curvature movement of whole organ uh, is actually called as tropic movement <clears throat> so phototropism is movement of part of plant in response to light thigmotropism uh, in response to touch or stimulus for example climbing vines chemotropism uh, is response to chemicals for example hyphae of fungi hydrotropism uh, is in response to water for example roots geotropism is movement in response to gravity for example both roots and shoots roots show positive geotropic and shoots show negative geotropism against the gravity nastic movements are non directional movements in response to external stimuli so there is no direction in nastic movements please remember nictinasty is shown by plant organs photonasty movement is in response to photo period not directly light so flowers open and close based on the presence or absence of light thermonasty movement is in response to temperature please remember as the term therm suggest tulip flowers close at night due to rapid growth in lower side now heptonastic movements occur in response to contact like venus fly trap when in, that's the in insectivorous plant and when some insect uh, uh, fall or sit on that uh, leaf it become closed that's so that kind of movement is called as heptonastic that is due to touch or contact only 
growth substances now please open your hearts as well as your minds auxins play major role in phototropism and geotropism auxin in dole stick acid in coleoptile stumps cause unequal enlargement of cells causing bend toward source of light so that is the simple uh, explanation of that how auxins involve in the bending of the uh, shoots or stems or some other organs of the plant auxins inhibit the growth of root cells on lower side so upper side grow and bend towards uh, gravity or downside auxins stimulate growth of stem cells lower side of stem elongate to bend upward so that is the opposite directional movement of stem and shoots uh, stem shoots and roots actually when a seed grow and we observe that always uh, roots move towards gravity and shoots move toward the upper side or toward light so that bending of shoots and roots is based on the directional growth or inhibition of the auxin hormone abscission or abscissions are growth inhibitors uh, while gibberellins are growth stimulators please remember the difference so nastic movements occur due to some ratio or balance between uh, these hormones epinasty is due to auxins while hyponasty is due to gibberellins please remember that slide is quite important with respect to previous mcqs types of skeleton hydrostatic uh, ya hydroskeleton is present in nidarians and annelids upright structure in sea anemone is due to hydrostatic skeleton and if water is removed that upright structure will also fall and uh, circular muscles uh, uh, present uh, uh, horizontally in earthworm circular muscles cause elongation while longitudinal cause uh, shortening this uh, fact we also have uh, seen in the previous chapters exoskeleton is uh, inert and non living inert mean it does not react with any kind of substance and is non living that uh, it usually or mostly it uh, do not grow exoskeleton is made up of two layers now please remember two layers of exoskeleton especially in the arthropods outer epicuticle while inner procuticle not endocuticle please remember outer epicuticle and inner procuticle epicuticle is waxy lipoprotein which is impermeable to water and as well as microorganisms but procuticle is further divided into two layers which are exocuticle and endocuticle procuticle is made up of chitin polysaccharides and proteins now please uh, note the difference between epicuticle and procuticle epicuticle is made from lipoprotein while procuticle is made from chitin or other polysaccharides and proteins bivalves and snail shell is made from calcium carbonate shell of land snail is lighter and lacks hard minerals please remember now molluscan shell can grow with animal as growth rings are apparent so that is the type of shell which grow with the organism and uh, there is no need of shedding or molting or ectodysis in mollusks most complex exoskeleton is of arthropods sensory receptors called sensilla are present in exoskeleton of arthropods these sensilla may be in the form of bristles or lenses in arthropods as present in the eyes modification is in arthropods exoskeleton allows gaseous exchange how one disadvantage of uh, arthropod exoskeleton is that it cannot grow so ectodysis or molting is the solution for that uh, problem hypodermal glands secrete enzyme that is the first stage of ectodysis which digest endocuticle to separate it from dermis this digestion is followed by secretion of new procuticle and epicuticle hormone ectodysone control all this please remember that is a very important fact endoskeleton 
कैल्शियम फास्फोरस सोडियम एंड पोटाशियम आर रेगुलेटेड बाय स्टोरेज इन बोन्स सो इफ दे आर एक्सेस इन द बॉडी दे आर स्टोर्ड इन द बोन इफ बॉडी नीड्स देन दे विल बी रिसाइकल्ड फ्रॉम बोन्स टू द बॉडी सो दैट्स वाई दे आर एज रेगुलेटर बाय स्टोरेज बोन मैरो इज अ कनेक्टिव टिश्यू प्लीज रिमेंबर बोन मैरो इट्स सेल्फ इज अ कनेक्टिव टिश्यू विच देन गिव राइज टू ब्लड सेल्स एंड ब्लड इज ऑल्सो कनेक्टिव टिश्यू सो बोन मैरो इट्स सेल्फ इज अ कनेक्टिव टिश्यू कॉलेजन इज अ प्रोटीन मेकिंग बोन एंड कार्टिलेज विद लिविंग सेल्स प्लीज रिमेंबर कॉलेजन इज अ प्रोटीन मेकिंग बोन ठीक है ऑस्टियोब्लास्ट आर बोन फार्मिंग सेल्स वाइल ऑस्टियोसाइट्स आर मैच्योर बोन सेल्स एंड ऑस्टियोक्लाट्स आर बोन डिजॉल्विंग सेल्स प्लीज रिमेंबर ऑल दीज टाइप्स ऑफ सेल्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू देयर फंक्शन द कांडोसाइट्स आर लिविंग सेल्स ऑफ कार्टिलेज विच स्क्रीट कॉलेजन नो ब्लड वेसल्स पेनिट्रेट कार्टिलेज कार्टिलेज इज विदाउट ब्लड वेसल एंड दैट्स वाई वी कैन पिंच आवर ईयर्स विदाउट लॉस ऑफ ब्लड in female that is hyaline is most abundant found in movable giants please remember hyaline cartilage elastic cartilage contain collagen fibers which form form pinna and epiglottis uh, in the humans fibrous cartilage is rigid and less flexible due to thick collagen fibers and is present uh, in the intervertebral discs human skeleton skull वर्टिब्रल कॉलम रिब्स एंड स्टर्नम दीज फोर स्ट्रक्चर्स फॉर्म एक्जियल स्केलेटन और एक्सिस स्केलेटन सेंट्रल एक्सिस वाइल क्रेनियम हैज एट बोन्स फोर अनपेयर्ड एंड टू पेयर्ड पेराइटल एंड टेम्पोरल बोन्स आर पेयर्ड सो देर आर टू पेराइटल एंड टू टेम्पोरल वाइल फ्रंटल ऑक्सीपिटल स्वीनाइड एथमाइड आर सिंगल बोन्स प्लीज रिमेंबर अमंग फोर्टीन फेशियल बोन्स Six are paired while two unpaired. So maxilla, zygomatic, nasal, lacrimal, palatine, and inferior concha are paired. That means there are two palatine bones, there are two lacrimal bones, there are two zygomatic bones. While mandible and vomer are single bones. Now fourteen plus eight equal to twenty-two bones in skull. So skull have twenty-two bones actually. Vertebral column has four curvatures with thirty-three bones. सर्वाइकल इन नेक हैज सेवन फर्स्ट टू बोन्स इन द सर्वाइकल आर एटलस एंड एक्सिस वर्टिब्रा प्लीज रिमेंबर दीज नेम्स ऑफ द टू वर्टिब्रा विच आर द फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड इन सर्वाइकल पोर्शन ट्वेल्व थोरेसिक एंड फाइव लंबर एंड नाइन इन द पेल्विक रीजन विद टू सेट्स सेक्रम एंड कॉक्सिक्स सो सेक्रम हैज फाइव फ्यूज वर्टिब्रे वाइल कॉक्सिक्स हैज फोर फ्यूज वर्टिब्रे please remember that is very deep knowledge 12 pairs of ribs that articulate with thoracic vertebrae 10 pairs connect with sternum with or without costal arch that arch actually connect the sternum with the rib from anterior side while lower two are floating ribs pectoral girdle has one scapula one suprascapula and one clavicle one arm has one humerus one radius one ulna eight carpals five metacarpals and 14 phalanges if you uh, clearly observe or deeply observe the skeleton uh, diagram of uh, from any book you can understand uh, the structure very easily pelvic girdle has two coxal bones each with three bones ilium ischium and pubis these three are fused or united with each other leg has one femur one tibia one fibula seven tarsals now please compare seven tarsal and uh, in the arm we have seen eight carpals five metatarsal and 14 phalanges so these that is the basic uh, uh, structures of the basic bones actually present in the human skeleton now have you ever wondered that why human have 206 bones how they count 206 so let's understand today skull have 22 ear has 6 uh, uh, 3 in each side uh, the malleus incus and stapes hyoid bone in the throat region it is one pectoral girdle has total four bones now in pectoral girdle only scapula 
and uh, uh, clavicle these are counted as two so on both sides they will be four vertebral column has 24 freely moving independent vertebrae while sacrum is counted as one and coccyx is also counted as one when uh, uh, moving toward 206 bones ribs are 24 in number sternum one pelvic girdle actually two bones which further have uh, three fused bones ilium istium etc but they are counted as only two four limbs uh, both have uh, 30 by 2 60 hind limbs uh, both have 29 by 2 58 and the patella bones which is also called as kneecap bone uh, on both knees uh, will be two so adding all these numbers will be 206 you, you can remember and you can understand and you can teach other students as well that how humans have 206 six bones and that uh, may vary in some uh, some individuals because uh, sternum bone may change uh, in number from one two or three and some other bones as well Giants. Fibrous giants are present in skull and uh, fix teeth into jaw through short collagen fibers. Hyaline cartilage giants uh, present between uh, growing bones. So that is the important thing for you to understand that growing bones uh, giants are basically hyaline cartilage. Fibrous cartilage giants are present between vertebrae where coxal bone meet pelvis. Synovial giants have cavity filled with fluid to reduce friction so synovial giants are important uh, and uh, most famous are synovial giants like hinge giants or ball and socket giant each synovial giant is surrounded by a fibrous capsule made of connective tissue and that capsule may be modified to ligament to hold bone and that mcq i have seen in the past paper that uh, which of the following structure is modified to form ligament and the option was capsule and that was quite confusing for everyone Hinge giants and ball and socket giants are synovial giants. In a hinge giant, pair of muscles are arranged in the same plane of giant, while ball and socket giants have two pairs of muscles attached perpendicular to each other. That's is another difference between hinge giant, ball and socket giant. Now, deformities of skeleton or disorders of skeleton or uh, diseases of skeleton. Cleft palate, microcephaly, and osteoarthritis are genetic deformities in bone. Please remember these three names. In cleft palate, maxilla and palatine bone fails to fuse, which results into suckling difficulty and uh, due to food inhalation in the lungs that may cause aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia is the most prominent uh, keyword here in the sentence. The term arthritis cover almost 100 inflammatory or degenerative diseases of giants. Most common arthritis is osteoarthritis which is chronic in nature, degenerative giant disease. Osteoporosis, now there is difference, Arthio, or osteoarthritis is different, osteoporosis is different, is another group of diseases caused by hormones. In this condition, bone dissolution becomes more than bone deposit. It occurs in aged women mostly due to decreased estrogen level because these are hormonal produced diseases. Now, estrogen replacement therapy or ERT, ERT is uh, famous term or technique. So, estrogen replacement therapy is used to protect osteoporotic bone fractures uh, uh, in women. Now, osteomalacia or soft bones is caused by malnutrition especially due to deficiency of calcium in adults. Weight bearing bones of uh, legs and pelvis bend and deform. Rickert is same disease caused in children due to deficiency of calcium and vitamin D. So osteomalacia and rickert. Rickert is actually type of osteomalacia in children. Herniation or disc slip is caused when one uh, lift heavy weight due to rupture of annulus fibrous followed by protrusion of spongy nucleus pulpolus uh, towards the spinal cord or nerves. When this protrusion press spinal cord or nerves, severe pain is generated. Uh, nucleus pulposus is a semi-fluid which act as a rubber ball with strong outer ring. 
the annulus fibrosus actually annulus fibrosus hold successive vertebrae together that is very important point to focus and remember concrete now spondylosis is a disease which cause immobility due to fusion of vertebral joints when vertebral columns stick together and it doesn't bend then the movement uh, is restricted injury of proximal sciatic nerve causes sciatica legs foot ankle movement is lost during this uh, sciatica disease acute arthritis is caused by bacterial invasion so it is treated by antibiotics and that is the only bone disease that is treated with antibiotics chronic arthritis may be osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis or gout or gouty arthritis while bone repair when the bone is repairing closed reduction is coaxing coaxing mean alignment of two axes the ends of broken bones by hand while in open reduction surgery is used with pins and wires to hold both uh, bones together to align them and to coax them now 8 to 12 weeks are required for healing but more is required in elders due to poor blood circulation and that is the genuine reason if you are asked that why bone healing is poor in uh, adults or in elder ones that is the reason poor blood circulation hematoma is mass of clotted blood formation uh, is the first step in bone repair so the first step is hematoma formation remember second step is soft callus uh, which begins 3 uh, to 4 weeks when capillaries grow into hematoma and migration of osteoblast and fibroblast occur due to site of fracture similarly division of fibroblast and osteoblast convert soft callus into bony callus that is the third stage now bones begin to form after 3 to 4 weeks that is the important key point here to remember formation or repair of bones actually begins after 3 to 4 weeks of injury and firm bone union up to 2 to 3 months that was it for the first half inshallah the next video will be of chapter 16 second half uh, muscles and locomotion etc to watch other chapters uh, please check the playlist or description of this video you will find the links there and you can directly go to that video hope you enjoyed the learning wait for the next part inshallah we shall meet in the next video uh, stay happy stay prepared stay healthy allah hafiz